Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif Mikado here, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this here is episode 66. Great number. You don't want to know why? Let me share a little something uh, with you guys. You could, uh, I'll let you do the math. 66 was the year I was born. <laughs> a lot of you guys listening to this were probably born more or less around that year, maybe a little bit before, maybe a little after, but... Uh, Yep, 66. Uh, same thing with Angel. So we were both born in 66. Um, October 25th. It's my birthday. Okay, make a note of that. Put it on your calendar. Okay. <laughs> um, Angel um, was born so funny. She was born New Year's Day. Okay. So... When we do her birthday, okay, so she's born January 1st, 66. And so this is the funny part, though. This is what's funny about it, okay? So whenever we have a, a New Year's Eve party in my house, so, you know, we get together, ball drops, Happy New Year, right? 30 minutes later, Happy Birthday, <laughs> yeah. 30 minutes later, and she was born in the house, in an apartment, in the the midst of a party, her mom refused to leave the party, and there's and so when she went into labor, so she ended up having Angel in the house during a party. Uh, makes sense now, huh? Anybody who knows her, <laughs> it all makes sense now, right? Okay, uh, me, I was just born in old Jacoby Hospital. Uh, you know, I don't think I've ever spoken to my mother about the day I was born. I don't, I don't remember that, you know. I don't remember, you know, this is why it's so important. You know, my mom's no longer around. This is why it's so important, people. Things that you don't know. Things that, even if you, you, you might think they're not important right now, ask them if your parents are still around or maybe some sort of, some elders in your family that can give you some insight into your life, into the past. I have an aunt who's 96 years old now. I'm talking a lot of shit because I've been wanting to put a camera on her forever, for the longest, and I don't know what I keep waiting for. Like I just said, she's 96. I was just with her, actually, you know? She still drives, still has her little drink drink here and there. Um, no health problems. Just getting older, you know? Um, but there are things that I kind of wish I would have asked. Same thing on my father's side. Like, I know absolutely nothing about my father's side of the family. And it's sad because I can't share it with my kids. Um, the last relative, I was never close to my father. I've, I've spoken about this in the past. My father, I think, I think my sister is, I think she's my younger sister on my father's side. He had two kids after me. Um, but I think my sister is like less than a year younger than me. So I'm in touch with them and I'm in touch I'm in touch mostly with my brother, but I'm in touch with my sister as well. But we don't really talk about my dad or about the past. Their mom is still around, thank God. She was always nice to me. But um I loved being around her growing up. She was she was really good. She was really good. Um uh, I have great experiences with her. But um with my father, I, you know, like I never sat down and asked about his father, I asked about his grandfather, I asked about, you know, what they did for a living, you know? Um, I think I, I heard that, man, I could be so wrong. I thought I heard that my grandfather on my father's side I think if this is right 
think I heard that he was, I don't know if they say he was a promoter. I don't know. You know, see, this is what's bad. This is horrible, man. This is, here I'm going to have regrets. Yeah, I could probably do Ancestry.com and find out, but it's nothing like, you know, asking your, your family, you know? You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to, you know, see, bringing this up is, is good because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to my brother, Keith. Uh, if you guys don't know, he's uh, Keith Mercado. He's on uh, he's on Facebook. You'll see him following me. Um, uh, I, I, wonder, I wonder what he, so he spent, I think, a little bit more time with my dad than I did. Uh, he actually lived with him. I remember when they lived with him. I don't ever remember when my dad lived with me. I don't remember that at all. In fact, I don't think he ever did. If I was correct, okay, so let me break down a story that I, hmm, I'm going to go as accurate as I possibly can. Apparently, when I was born and my mother brought me home, my father came to see me. Okay, so check this out. So my father came to see me as an infant, fresh out of the hospital, okay? Now, apparently, they were together. They were just not living together. I don't think my mother ever lived with my father now that I'm thinking about it. Or maybe he did. I'm not sure. You know, my sister Cindy might even know some of this stuff. But... From what I remember my mother telling me was, he came to see me, right? And I don't know if it was my sister, but somebody told my mother that my father's girlfriend was waiting in the car downstairs. How crazy is that? And apparently my mother went down there Furious, My mother was no joke. People didn't mess with her. And when she got downstairs, his girlfriend at the time, I believe that's my brother and sister's mom, Emma. Beautiful person. Hold nothing against her. Don't blame her for a thing. In fact, she's a victim, just like my mom was. But anyway, my mom ran down, and I guess she saw the fury in my mom's eyes. Come on, she just had me. And my father comes to see his son. Actually, I think I was his firstborn. There's a rumor that he had other sons, but I don't know anything about them. So they they don't count. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm his first son. I'm his first child. And she ran down. And when the girlfriend saw my mom coming, she got scared because my mom had fury in her eyes. And she rolled up the window. And she refused to put it back down. And my mother made regular threats, you know. Um, Nothing I'm proud of because, like, again, you know, uh, I actually grew up around Emma. And she was always wonderful to me. She was like the per... I mean, she... I hate to even call her stepmother because it has such a negative stigma sometimes. But she was like a mother. She was. She really, really looked out for me. And when I went there, I felt loved. I felt special. And I felt like one of her children. So she didn't make me feel different at all. At all. So, and um, if my father had to get with anyone, I'm glad it was her. <laughs> See, this stuff doesn't affect me. It doesn't... I'm sure it... it I'm sure it really messed up my mom at that time, you know? I mean, come on, you know? Latina woman, you know? You know? My mom used to always tell me that she wanted me. So my mother never claimed that having me was a mistake or getting pregnant was a mistake. (laughs) She said, you're not a bastard. (laughs) You know who your father is. I know who your father is. She was, I wanted you. I didn't want a man in my life, but I wanted you. But I think she was, they were still seeing each other. So either they were still seeing each other or a warrant. And my mother just took it as being disrespectful to come 
on the day that you're going to see your son for the first time, your firstborn, and you're going to bring your girlfriend with you. And you're going to leave her in the car. You're not even going to have the audacity to bring her upstairs or to call and say, hey, can I bring her? You know? I don't know. My mom would have been probably been cool with that. You know? I think it was just that level of disrespect that um that she didn't appreciate. And, uh, yeah, so, so it was crazy. So I... <laughs> I remember going to my father's job. You know what he did for a living? Let me let me take some of this water here for a second. Um, he worked in a factory in Long Island. And the two things that I remember this factory making, he was like, he was a big boss, he was a supervisor, was they made labels and, the, and they made bags. And one of the bags that they made was wise potato chips and the other bag and the other label they made was uh, Red Devil Paint the labels for them now I would always assume that wise has its own factory and makes its own labels maybe they do now maybe they didn't then but I remember seeing these things go through the machines unless I was bugging but I don't think I was bugging um First, I thought it was cheese doodles, but no, it was wise potato chips, and it was uh, it was the old school bags, man, from you know, think about 70s. So, and the Red Devil paint cans, uh, the labels. Uh, so, I guess they made the labels and then shipped them to the factories, and the factories put them on. I don't remember them, um, I don't remember like paint cans, you know, they, I don't remember any of that. My mom, my dad was a, he was a supervisor because uh, he pretty much walked around half drunk. And uh, and uh, I know he made pretty decent money, even though we never seen any of it. Uh, I know he had a beautiful home at one point. I think he lost that though. And um, I remember I was with um, <clears throat> I think it was with my nephew Eddie, and we went over to my father's for the weekend. He came and he picked me up, and I was like, "Can Eddie come?" You know, because Eddie, like I said, he's my nephew, but he's only a few years younger than me. So, he was more like my brother. So, we played and we hung out, you know. So, having him was like having my best friend around. So, it was cool. So, I remember Eddie coming. And I believe it was Eddie because there was another time my friend Bobby came. So, Eddie would probably, Eddie, I know you listen to the podcast. Confirm with me tomorrow when you, after you hear this. Was it you or was it Bobby that... <clears throat> they had these rabbit these they had rabbits all over the yard of this house in in Long Island. Now remember, I must have been 12 years old maybe. I don't think I was more than 12. I don't think I was 13 yet. I think I was like 12, maybe even 11. And um they had these rabbits all over the place. So, what boys, what do boys do? We're going to try to catch some rabbits. Why? I don't know to catch them, I guess. <laughs> um so we would dig these holes, right? And then we would put the real light branches and we would, we would cover it up so you couldn't see it. And we were hoping that we could get the rabbit to run in that direction and fall in the hole. <laughs> so, so we did that. My father knew what we were doing, but then he, would, he got drunk one time. He used to get drunk. I remember him drinking milk and vodka. Like... Come on, man. Was that is that the White Russian? I mean, was that like the original White Russian? I don't know. You drinkers could tell me. I don't know. I only know about one. I'm only a, a, a freaking connoisseur of wine. Anyway, <laughs> um, I remember him getting drunk, and he just started some shit with us. Like, started yelling, or I don't know what he was talking about. I remember being comical. I wasn't scared at all, but, you know... I, it was no way I could take a guy like him serious. It was he didn't have, he wasn't a father figure. He wasn't a figure of authority. Now my mother yelled different story, attention. Uh, him I don't remember. It wasn't I was disrespectful, but I don't ever remember him being feared or fearful of him. I remember him saying, "You're out there. You're trying to catch damn rabbits. What you gonna do? You're gonna hurt them by? Well, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find those holes and I'm gonna cover them in." So me and I think it was Eddie. I think it was Eddie. Might have been Bobby. Let's see. Um, I remember we're looking out the window. My father's out in the area. 
looking for the hoes while he's drunk. And I don't think I need to tell you what happened next. Absolutely. He fell in one. But he didn't fall both feet. He only fell one feet, one foot. And they were pretty deep. So the other foot was still up high. So that foot, that second foot was like under his chin. And I remember us busting out laughing. We busted because we're watching him. Because I remember watching him walk around that little field area. And then all of a sudden, he disappeared. I was like, oh. (laughs) And he's in the hole. And his foot is like right next to his chin, man. It was the funniest thing on earth. I don't remember what happened after that. He definitely didn't beat me. Uh, He never touched me. Mama wouldn't go for that shit anyway. He would be in trouble. (laughs) He knew better. He didn't do it because he was a a nice dad. He did it because he'd get his ass beat (laughs) by my mother. (laughs) You know, don't play, you know. If you ain't raised me, you ain't touching me, you know. She was the only one allowed to touch me. (laughs) But, um, but yeah, so I I remember that. And, um, man, I remember another time. He drove me, Eddie, my nephew, my brother Keith and my sister Inez to a lake. He brought us to a lake so we could go and play in the water and play. I don't even remember if we even went in the water. It might have been just a lake that, you know, we had. they have the playgrounds. So it was just next to water. And I remember he used to let us... He used to let us sit in the car and goof around the car. Now, in those days, you can throw the car in reverse without the key in the ignition. Can't do that anymore. Not that I know. If I know my car, you can't. And we were all in the car. And when we did that, and actually, we didn't put it in reverse. We threw it into neutral. We didn't know what we were doing. We are just moving that shit up and down that level. And the car moved. And we were all in the car. And the car started to roll backwards towards the lake. And then suddenly it hit a tree. Okay? It hit the tree. And when we got out the car, what happened was my father was on the grass, knocked out. He was he was asleep. He didn't see any of this happen. He didn't see the, us playing in the car. He didn't see it. Rolled down the hill or hit the tree. He was knocked on the grass. We didn't know what to do. I remember us trying to wake him up. We didn't wake him up. I think my nephew had hurt himself or hurt his back or something. I forgot. Um, I remember another, another, uh, that same day, I remember earlier that day, just when my father was getting drunk, my nephew Eddie was on the seesaw. And I remember this. And he was going up and down, up and down on the seesaw. And when he brought Eddie up, he let the seesaw go. You know how kids do to each other? And they make the seesaw go slamming down. And, yeah, my nephew. So whatever age I was, Eddie was three years younger. So if I was 10, Eddie was seven. You know, maybe even younger than that. And I remember him doing that. And I was always pretty protective. I was like, I was the only one that could pick on my nephew. I didn't like nobody else picking on him. Only me. <laughs> um, I remember not liking that. I remember that bugging me quite a bit. And then my sister, who was basically the mature one of the bunch, uh, called her mom. There was a from a pace phone. And her mother came and picked us up. And I remember her being so angry, man. And I, I, we, she's telling us all to get in her car. And I said, well, wh- are we going to wake him up? She says, she looks at him. She goes, no, leave him there. And we got in the car. And we went home. I don't know what happened after that. I'm sure he came home and there was a big fight or whatever the case was. I don't remember. But I remember that happening. And it was crazy, you know. And maybe it was, you know, a good thing that he wasn't around me. Maybe it was a good thing that he didn't come and get me more often. Or he wasn't around me because he probably would have killed me one way or the other. (laughs) You know? Who knows? But, um... Well, yeah, man. So, yeah, I kind of wish I knew a little bit more. When he passed away, I didn't go to a funeral. My mom told me, she says, well, 
Your dad passed. I said, oh, okay. And I remember I just saw him not too long, maybe two years earlier. I remember he was happy to see me, but I had just had my son. And I kind of want my son to meet him. I want Adam to meet him. And I showed him a picture of Adam and he, it was like I was showing him a puppy. You know, like, it's the weirdest thing, you know? I guess because my mother was so infatuated with my with my son that I, I kind of expected my father to be the same way and wasn't. You know, he was kind of cold and he was into me, but he wasn't into his grandson. He's probably his only grandson. I know, well, now my sister has kids, but at that time, it was just... I was the only one that had a kid. I mean, because Adam's going to, he's 29 now. So, but um, I remember that and uh, it was just weird. It was just a weird feeling. And it seemed like just a couple years later that he passed away. And my uncle called, told my mother that he had died. My mother told me and I was like, so, you know, my mom was cool. She said, listen, I know you really don't know any of those people there. But if you want to go to the funeral, I'll go with you. And I thought about it for a second. It didn't take me a long time. And I told her, honestly, I wasn't around him while he, while he was alive. Like, don't want to see him dead. I really didn't. You know, if you have at least some memories of someone alive, the memories I had was so blurry and so incomplete, you know, like I remember snapshots, like I'm telling you stories of situations like him falling in the hole or him falling asleep in the grass. And that's it. That's it. Or him hurting Eddie on the, so on the seesaw. But that's it. I don't have any other, I don't have memories of him sitting down with me watching TV, maybe having a conversation with me about something or taking me to a park where he actually pushes me on a swing or something or taking me to a movie or taking me to the circus or taking me to the zoo. I don't have these memories. I don't know if he ever did them. Maybe he did. I don't remember them. Because if he did do them, they didn't make any impact on me whatsoever. It's funny what things do make an impact. And I declined. I didn't want to go to the funeral. And my mother didn't bother me. She didn't. She said, you know what? That's fine. If you change your mind, I'll go with you. So you don't have to go there alone. Now, that's a lot for her to say because she's going to have to face her, you know, <laughs> his, his other wife or his ex-wife gonna have to face her kids which she was always cool with them she 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 loved my my mom loved Inez and Keith I, they were around me when I was when I was young we found each other they they the, our parents had nothing to do with that like well my mother had nothing to do with it because it wasn't her kids but my father had zero to do with the reuniting of my brother and sister first when we were kids and then we reunited again this was before I went to prison and we reunited again through Facebook and that was me looking for them and I found them on social media. Thank God for social media. Um, and uh, yeah, so I declined. I, I didn't want to go. I remember my uncle calling my mother. He was kind of a little upset. And he was like, you know, you should make him go. That's his father. And my mother said, hold up. Hold up. First of all, none of you Mercados, that's what she said. None of you Mercados ever did a damn thing for him. So there's no way in the world am I going to force him to do something that he doesn't want to do. He's a grown man now. He makes his own decisions. I don't make him do anything. If he wants to go, I told him I'll go with him. But he doesn't want to go, and I'm not going to force him. I'm not going to try to talk him into it. It is what it is. Leave it alone. And that's how it is. And I'll tell you honestly, years later, I'm going to tell you who gave me a little guilt. Ernest Thomas, who was one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Raj from What's Happening. And we were talking, we were having a serious conversation, and you know, he's older than me. Uh, Ernest has me by about 10 years. And he told me, I said, what would you have done? He goes, I would have went. I said, really? He said, yeah. And he goes, I would have once been, have been the bigger person. 
I would want to have told him, look, I am nothing like you. And he made so much sense when he said that. And I have regrets. I have regrets. Nothing I can do about it. I mean, I'm not going to lose sleep and I'm not going to die over it. But I have regrets. It bothers me. Um, and I, I stress that to so many people. Think. Think. Try not to have regrets. When that time comes and that final bell rings, it's time for you to check out. Think back. Don't have regrets. If you go to a senior citizen's home and you talk to the people, you talk to the elders there, the elderly there, some of them in their 90s, a lot of them are going to have regrets. Oh, I should have done this. Oh, I should have done that. Do everything you can not to have regrets. Doesn't have to mean, oh, I regret I don't have, I didn't make, I wasn't rich. No, those are not the regrets you're going to have. The regrets you're going to have is what you do for your kids, what you do for your grandkids, what you do for your parents, what you've done for your friends, your, 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 you know, your neighbors, your community, you know. Those are things that are going to, I think, that will, you'll regret. I should have sat on the floor and played with my kids when they were little or my grandkids when they were little. But instead, I didn't. I wanted to watch the game. I wanted to do this. So those are things that I fight every day. I don't want to have those kind of regrets. If I die right now, I'll probably have regrets. There's, there's things I'm still building, still trying to correct. But I'm aware of this stuff. So self-awareness. I understand where I'm at. I understand my faults, my shortcomings. And every day, I just work on it. Do the best I, I can. So but anyway, um... That's it, folks. Uh, it's Friday night. This is me and Andrew. We haven't been home in two weekends. So we just dropped Santana off. Then we went, grabbed, grabbed a pie, pizza pie from the new spot and came home. We're going to watch a couple movies. Well, I, I can't say a couple. We're going to watch one movie because <laughs> I'm already feel like I want to fall asleep. So anyway, all right, guys, listen, if you're going out, man, be safe. God bless. Don't drink and drive. Okay. Enjoy your weekend. Remember, don't have regrets. And until tomorrow night, good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.